Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Tanks with the Mighty Jingles. Yeah, I know, World of Tanks on Friday. My schedule's been all over the place this week, you can thank Sea Power for that, but I didn't forget about World of Tanks. Today we're on the Karelia map. Every time I say the name of this map, I keep expecting Han Solo to pop up somewhere. It's not a particularly obscure reference, but eh, if you get it, you get it, well done. So, this is FT2 Laffy, and he is in the American Tier 8 Premium Medium Tank, the AAT-60. Oh, replay bug, no engine noises. Don't worry, we can fix that, we just rewind the replay, and it should, if it doesn't crash, start working. This is a funny looking tank. It looks like it has an unmanned turret, and that's not quite true. The commander does sit in the turret. The rest of the crew technically are in the turret but they're in the turret basket, which is actually in the hull of the tank. So this does allow... Whoa, what happened there? Um, oh, another replay bug. The sixth sense icon is up. Don't worry, the second does actually get spotted. That should reset itself. So what do you need to know about the AAT-60? Well, it's on with a 105mm gun. And the gun is... not bad. The DPM is... It's not great, 2,300 damage per minute with 320 average alpha damage and pretty good penetration for a tier 8 medium, 230 millimetres. It has a nice snappy two second aiming time which isn't bad at all. Is he going to try to park up behind this rock? That T-37 is, no he's not going to like that, because <laughs> if anybody spots Laffy and starts shooting at him the T-37 was going to take the hit. And now he has been spotted. There we go. So, right. Uh, the bug six cents icon should no longer be an issue. Good hit there on the M6. Then gets smacked by the Crusader SP. Uh, because this tank doesn't have any armour. Well, it kind of does. It's got a good gun mantlet. Although, don't be fooled by any websites telling you that this thing has 150mm of turret armour. It kind of does. But only in a very, very narrow strip to either side of the gun mantlet. It does have a good gun mantlet, but the rest of the frontal turret armour is no more than 100mm at best. And the rest of the armour on the tank is no more than 70mm at best. This is not a well-armoured medium. That is dead Achilles. It's not the first kill of the match. Uh, the friendly T-37 probably got spotted by the Achilles and killed. Oh, and it's already time to fall back, because there's now only a T-78, and, uh, well, he's just died. So there is now nothing preventing at least four enemy tanks from sweeping around to the northwest. Fortunately, there's a handy depression here that Laffy can use. Oh, wow. It's almost like he saw the artillery shot coming. If he had hit that rock, that would have been a direct hit. Oh, well, happy accidents and all that. And this tank does not want to get hit by artillery because it doesn't have any armour. I mean, he took one hit from the Crusader SP and that did 214 damage. Fortunately, the lack of armour does mean that this is a reasonably mobile tank. Well, um, it's, it's not slow. <laughs> Certainly not fast, with a top speed of 44 kilometres per hour. But it does have a very good reverse speed of 22 kilometres per hour. And the overall mobility is pretty good. It's kind of like the Centurion in that respect, where the top speed isn't amazing, but the mobility is good nevertheless. There's plenty of grunt in the engine for the weight of the tank. Oh, that's not good. That Cromwell in the middle is definitely spot on the base. Hubble just took out the OI. And right now, Laffy's trying to figure out which of the two flanks he should try to prop up, because neither is doing particularly well. Looks like he's decided he wants to try to spot and kill that Cromwell B, who is spotting from the middle. And then a target of opportunity pops up. And surprisingly, that missed. Although the Cromwell B did not. Got another opportunity to finish off the Leo, though, if it'll just give him a shot. Oh, hang on. Target's on the ridge. Nice. Not enough for a kill, unfortunately. Angling up behind the wreck of the OI to ensure that Cromwell B doesn't get another shot at him. Oh, and he's got the Leo. And then as Laffy's looking to try to get a second shot and a kill on the XM66F, the team go two kills behind. 
And then as even more incoming fire starts pummeling his position, he realises that spot is no longer safe and gets out of there just before artillery gives him the bad news. Still doesn't have a shot at the XM66F and he is still getting hit. But he knows how to take a hint and he gets the hell out of there. He's still trying to figure out which side he wants to reinforce, although it's going to be easier for him to head over to the east, and on the way, he does get a decent shot at the Staghound, but again, I mean that hit, but it wasn't the kill. And it's the SU-8 who actually finishes him off. He's looking at the map, and there's only a Skoda T-27 left up to the northwest, with a Nomad and a Scorpion ready to defend against him. So I think he's considering, maybe if to deal with the Skoda T-27, he can circle around to the northwest and get behind the enemy team. He's certainly got the mobility for it. Still no sign of that Cromwell, who was spot in the middle, but, well, there's nothing there for him to spot anymore, so it's likely that he's moved around. And then, looking at the situation on the ridge over there on the east, that's not looking particularly clever either, and then the T-27 pops up. Now, you'd think that an SU-8 Nomad and a Scorpion would be able to take care of a lone T-27, even if it does have artillery support. Laffy takes one shot, gets a hit, and then, guessing that the three of them, well, okay, the Nomad's dead, the two of them can probably handle a lone medium tank, especially given the fact that the friendly XM-66F up on the ridge has just run out of friends. Laffy decides he's going to head around here and, well, he might not be able to get there quickly enough to back him up, but he's certainly going to give it the old college try. And that's when the T-27 finishes off the Scorpion as well, leaving just the SU-8 in the base. But, well, what are you going to do? Lappy's kind of committed. There's an opportunity for a one-shot kill here. Surprise! Yep, it's me. They're now only three kills behind. But things are going to get a lot worse before they get any better. The XM-66F has been taken out by that pesky Cromwell B. Laffy, of course, got spotted when he made his last kill, so there's artillery on the way. The T-27 finishes off the SU-8. Laffy is now the last tank left alive on his team. With 274 hit points after taking a hit from the IS, five enemies remaining. Fortunately, while it doesn't have any armour, the AAT-60 can comfortably drive circles around an IS, and, uh, well, the Crusader rather unwisely chose violence. Speaking of choosing violence, as the rock up ahead takes an artillery shot that was aimed right at Laffy, nobody's capping. Which almost certainly means that the T-27, and he, he's expecting it, he was looking back that way for him, but yes, the T-27 has chosen violence too. And so is the Cromwell B. Laffy snaps off a return shot, narrowly avoids getting finished off by artillery. It's going to take more than one hit to kill the Cromwell, and, well... Cromwell's not famous for its accuracy while firing on the move, so that one went nowhere near him. Here's the T-27. He has 22 hit points remaining. <laughs> it's going to take another shot. One hit and he's dead. Not quite sure what the T-27 was doing there. He kind of zigged when he should have zagged. Um, which allowed Laffy to get the second shot off and the kill before the T-27 could get the gun pointed in the right direction which allows Laffy to breathe a huge sigh of relief. Whoa! <laughs> As he hugs that rock like his life depended on it. Because it in fact does. Remember, dead tanks continue to spot you for a couple of seconds after they've been knocked out. More than a couple of seconds if they have the relevant commander skills. And well, this game's been around long enough that there are plenty of people out there with multiple crew skills on the crews of their tanks. So, it's Laffy versus two artillery. He's already been hit once by the Crusader SP, and that Hummel is on five kills. One more and it's a Top Gun. I think it's probably fair to say that everybody left alive in this battle is, well, sweating bullets right now. Laffy, obviously, because he only has 22 hit points and, well, artillery doesn't even need to score a direct hit to kill him. Splash damage alone will get the job done. And the enemy artillery for, well, what should be fairly obvious reasons, they're being hunted by a medium tank. And if they don't work together, one of them spot him, the other one kill him, well, they're just making things difficult for themselves. Laffy didn't spot anything from the ridge. I mean, it was extremely unlikely that he was going to, but then somebody slips into the cap circle. Something that the Cromwell B and the Skoda T-27 are probably wishing they'd done two minutes ago, because they would have already won by now. But, hey, no cap, kill all. So that's one of the artillery. 
don't know which one it is. Oh, that's the communications expert perk activating after he's done more spot and damage than his uh, initial hit points. Not that that's really going to help him now. So, somebody's in the cap circle. The chances are good that whoever's in there is going to be tucked in behind the bunker. And Laffy's probably hoping that's the case, because if he gets spotted coming over this ridge, and he does not... Okay, he now actually has a fighting chance, because if one of the RT had been in a position where he was able to actually see Laffy coming, then the other one would have already killed him. But instead, they're actually trying to win by capping. And they're tucked in behind the bunker. And it's the Crusader SP. Laffy is going to get one shot, and then he has to keep moving, because, yep, there's the shot from the Hummel. And based on the firing arc and the shell tracer, the Hummel is camping the back of his own base, and has probably been there the entire battle. But hey, let's not judge him too harshly. It's worked well for him so far. He is on five kills. So, the Hummel now knows that Laffy is coming. And this does give the Hummel all of the advantages. Because he's going to be hiding in the bushes at the back of the base. And despite the fact that the Hummel is the size of a small bomb, it has enough camo rating to make a light tank jealous. Which means it is extremely likely that the first time Laffy is aware of the Hummel's precise position will be because the Hummel has just fired from concealment and there's a 150mm high explosive shell with Laffy's name on it, and he has no armour, and he only has 22 hit points. And remember, Sixth Sense will tell him that the Hummel has spotted him, even if he can't see the Hummel, but Sixth Sense doesn't activate until three seconds after you've been spotted. Unless Laffy has a crew member with a signal interception skill, which reduces the time that it takes for Sixth Sense to go off after you've been spotted by 0.75 seconds which still means he's going to be spotted for 2.25 seconds before he's even aware of it. And I don't even know whether or not he has that skill, so let's just say 3 seconds. Which is 3 seconds too long when you have 22 hit points, and there's a Hummel with high explosive loaded, waiting for you to poke your nose into his cap circle. There are three avenues of approach to this cap circle, which means there's a 33.3 recurring percent chance that the Hummel is going to be looking the right way. And the Hummel is looking the right way. But thanks to the terrain, the two of them can only see the barest fraction of each other. And by some miracle, that shot actually connected. Which means, well, yeah, game over. Victory. Nine kills. One short of a pools medal. And of course, because he was the last tank left alive on the team against five enemies, and even though at the time he was the last tank left alive on the team, he was against six enemies... That is the extremely rare and coveted Kolobanov's medal. Not the only medals, of course. I mean, look at that. <laughs> at this point, I think he's just, he's just showing off. He's got a steel wall. How do you get a steel wall in this thing? That's just taking the piss. By the way, you know this tank was originally a World of Tanks console exclusive, where it's a tier 9 tank destroyer. <laughs> Yeah, no, I can't figure that one out either. Either way, well done, FT2 Laffy in the AAT-60 Tier 8 Medium Tank. Great match, well played, and congratulations on a thoroughly well-earned victory. Hope you all enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.